You have water, you have sugar, mix them together, <laughs> and then you add yeast. The yeast consume the sugar and create alcohol. It's the basic premise behind all alcoholic beverages. Basically, for most of us, we're making beers that we want to drink, and then we're going out there and selling them. I guess marketing people would call that product driven. It's not about perfecting what's come 100 years ago, but really about perfecting exceptional beer that's interesting and appropriate to palates now. You know, the most popular craft beer style now is IPA, India Pale Ale. That beer was actually developed by a brewer in the UK in the 1820s. They were shipping beer to India, to the Imperial Army, and they found that going around the Cape of Good Hope, around Africa, to get to Calcutta, often the beer was, was spoiled by the time it got there. So a brewer named George Hodgson decided using a lot of hops in the beer would preserve it better for that trip and making it stronger too. Higher alcohol would preserve it. So that's where that whole tradition of uh, heavily hopped beers began. So a lot of the innovation that happened during like the sort of industrial period of brewing was aimed at simplifying and streamlining the making of beer and turning it into uh, an easily reproducible industrial product. And now we're going the opposite direction. All of the kind of innovation that's happening today is more geared towards making things more complex to make and also more complex in flavor. We're really now in the third generation of the, the craft beer revolution. I consider myself part of the first generation. The second generation I call the innovation generation. That happened in the 1990s when uh, we went way beyond making, you know, amber lager, porters, stouts, and started making Belgian style beers. And now we have a whole new generation of craft brewers. Joe and I are gypsy brewers. Gypsy brewing is basically when you don't own a brick and mortar brewery and you're traveling around to existing commercial breweries to rent their equipment to brew your beer. Really late innovation to brewing, something that's only been around for the last 115 years or so, is the knowledge of particular yeast strains and the ability to use a monoculture to ferment your beverage and that's taken over the world of brewing because it's such an easy way to get a clean, pleasant, and simple tasting beer. With a quick turnaround. With a quick turnaround. We have a wit beer that we brewed. Uh, it's called Double Sesh. It's a play on words, because it's actually, it's a session beer, um, but it has sexual peppercorns in it, so that's, that's where the double comes from. A wit beer is a nice kind of platform to look at you know, spicing combinations. It's got some really interesting yeast characters. It's usually, you know, pretty light, pretty drinkable. So we were looking at kind of different cultural influences and ginger, Szechuan peppercorn, kind of somewhat Asian influences were interesting to me. And so we were experimenting with those as kind of innovating on, on a, a traditional style. We've had a couple of beers come out recently that are styles that are extinct or nearly extinct. One of them was a style called Lichtenhainer, which is an old German sour wheat beer. When we go back and look at that style, we think about how we can do it with a conscious knowledge of the microbes involved um, that they may not have had the science for uh, back when it was a popular style. My generation was inspired by the great breweries of Europe, you know, uh, Belgium, Germany, the UK, Scandinavia. And, and now the craft brewing revolution has gone way beyond that. And the innovation that's happening here now is actually being copied by craft brewers in the great brewing countries of Europe. So it's kind of come full circle. The most interesting brewing in the world is happening here in America now.